Hey guys, welcome to Juicy Tea, where I read out the best stories on Reddit so you don't have to. The funny, shocking, and satisfyingly juicy. Am I the a-hole for wanting my mother-in-law to move out after she kicked my parents out? Posted by Vetty Menti. Hi, I'm here to ask for advice and to make my husband see that I'm not the a-hole. He is hoping you can see where I'm coming from. I live with my husband, four children, and mother-in-law, 65 female. My mother-in-law moved in with us back in 2015 after my father-in-law passed because she was financially struggling. My mother-in-law is not easy to live with and we struggled immensely at the beginning but after a few years we found a way to cohabit. Then recently my parents house burnt down and they moved in with us while everything is getting sorted out with insurance and so on. My boys are sharing a bedroom as my parents are currently staying in my eldest room. My mother-in-law has struggled with this and she seems to hate my mother being around. My mother has done absolutely nothing to upset her or disturb her. In fact, my parents' bedroom is on the other side of the house. She doesn't, however, have a problem with my father and always finds a way to hang out with him. A few days ago, while I was away for work, a massive argument happened between my mother and my mother-in-law. My mother accused her of trying to seduce my father and there were some inappropriate texts sent to my father. My father had immediately showed it to my mother and my mother responded as if she was my father to see how far mother-in-law would go. And well, she went far. My mother confronted her and mother-in-law called the police saying she felt threatened, who then escorted my parents out of the house. This all happened while my husband was at work and the kids were at school. My parents went to stay at a hotel and they explained what happened to me over the phone. When I returned, I gave mother-in-law two weeks to move out. My husband thinks I am escalating things and I should forgive his mother's actions because she was lonely and confused. FYI, there's nothing wrong with her. She's in good health. So, am I the a-hole for wanting her out of our house and my life? Edit. My husband hasn't seen the texts and pictures his mother sent my father. The only reason he hasn't seen it is because he refused to, but I think I'll have to insist because I really need him to understand how nasty she's been. Also, I wanted to kick her out immediately, but my husband begged me to give him two weeks so he could find a place for her. And my parents, being the saints that they are, said that I should give him that. My husband has profusely apologised to my parents, but my parents aren't upset with us and hold only mother-in-law responsible as it was her disgusting actions that led to this. This comment basically sums it up. Salt Lavishness 7560 says, Mother-in-law didn't just kick OP's parents out, she called the cops on them and had them removed from OP's home. Which reeks of mother-in-law now thinking she's calling the shots in that house and if OP's husband gets his way, she will. I'm gobsmacked at the delusion of the husband She's lonely. Then go to bingo, volunteer at the library, join a garden club. There's about a million ways an able-bodied 65-year-old woman can entertain herself and keep herself busy and engaged. One of those ways is not to put the moves on your daughter-in-law's dad. Hell, she initially moved in because of finances. Get a job. She wasn't confused about texting silverhead porn at that poor man. She wasn't confused when she called the cops on them. And she wasn't confused when she presented herself as the legal occupant of the house and had them removed. She's been there for what, 8-9 years now? She thinks she's got the position to call the shots in the home. Not the a-hole. Honestly, I don't know how she can stay after this stunt. Friend is a bridezilla. Yay! This story comes from the Entitled People subreddit, posted by Fandom Lover 101 One of my friends is planning her wedding. Or rather, she expects me to plan her engagement announcement party, her bridesmaid announcement luncheon, her bachelorette party, and the wedding ceremony and the reception. She also expects me to contribute financially, all while not attending the wedding because, and I quote, My fiancé used to have a crush on you, and I don't want him to be tempted to run away with you. Can you imagine the embarrassment of being left for you? Ha ha ha! What? Summing up the rest of the convo, I told her off and questioned how she can make demands like that to someone who she clearly doesn't respect. She said that I planned one of my aunt's weddings and I both planned and funded a friend's baby shower, 
This was my best friend since elementary school, and she has no family willing or able to support her. This was me making it clear that I'd be there for her and her child as godmother. I don't get it. This particular person has always rubbed me wrong, but was always in the friend group. Her fiancé is genuinely kind and always talks on how she's not that bad. When you have to say they're not that bad, maybe they are. But are you seriously not entitled when you want someone else to plan an event, partially fund it, and not attend because you're insecure? She is still texting me potential venues right now, as if I didn't just tell her off and hang up on her 10 minutes ago. Oh my god, the audacity! Update. Talk to the fiancé and he's getting off work soon. We're gonna meet up at a mutual friend's place. I already texted that mutual some of the screenshots and she's trying to see what she can get from Bridezilla. Hopefully, whatever is shared will be helpful. Bridezilla allegedly plays her entitlement and dislike of me off as a joke, and that's why most of our mutual friends laugh at it. Don't see how that's even remotely funny, but whatever. Gonna meet up in half an hour or so. Update 2. The night and early morning has been spent spamming the friend group chat with screenshots of delusion and anger. So, to update everyone that asked for one, I met up with a fiancé, who I'm gonna call Ryan, and a mutual, Rachel, around 11pm at Rachel's place. I noticed that someone said, it seems like I'm into him, and I want to clarify that I've been friends with him since high school freshman year. He's someone I care greatly for, and someone who's been through a lot in regards to bad families and poor examples of healthy relationships. The way I treat him is the way I treat my best friend Kim, the one that I'm godmother for. This meeting could have gone south quickly, but I'm glad I involved another friend. I showed him the text first and told him about the call. I explained to both him and Rachel that everyone laughing when Bradzilla does things like that to hurt my feelings contributes to her thinking it's okay. I'm the go-to friend, all reliable, who supposedly never says no. And yeah, I help who I can, but I'm no doormat. Ryan was confused about the crush thing and fixated on that. He didn't want to acknowledge anything else at first. He eventually just cried and Rachel took over by telling him that she's also been texting Bridezilla and the way she speaks about me when she thinks she has a fellow anti-OP isn't cool nor healthy. Some of her texts from Bridezilla were awful, most about me getting Baker acted in high school. One that Rachel wanted us both to see was a list of female mutuals not allowed to attend or have any contact post-wedding because Ryan called them pretty, but I'm the only one pretty in his life, LMAO! I asked Ryan permission to blow it up, i.e. if he was okay with me sharing everything in our main circle of friends. Honestly, I didn't want to put him in a worse spot, but I already know Bridezilla was getting upset that I wasn't responding to her. Her texts were getting extremely nasty, and I'm glad I hadn't blocked her yet. He said yes, and I, a Samsung user, took the long screenshots and started spamming the group chat with them. No warning, no context. I started with the only text I sent her. No, I won't plan and fund your wedding and be disrespected while doing it. I get that we're not actually friends, but you don't speak to people like that and still think they'll do anything for you. I blocked Bradzilla right after this. Rachel hasn't shared her screenshots yet, but things have been... interesting. Bridezilla is sending messages through others about me not taking a joke well, but the ones passing it on are saying they're very sorry for how they've gone along with that behaviour. I've blocked them too, at least temporarily, because why are you passing along her text of what she wants to say to me when I told you I'm done and I don't want anything more to do with her? Yeah, literally. Is that normal friend behaviour? I'm seriously asking at this point. As of now, it's 9 something in the morning, and I have more people to send my copy paste of I'm temporarily blocking you as I want nothing to do with Bridezilla and blocking them. Ryan has apparently sent her a text saying to keep the ring and blocked her. Rachel hasn't blocked her and is on some multi way call with her. Apparently, she's a mess and it's all my fault. Of course, it is. Boo hoo, don't start drama and there won't be drama. Rachel says she's going to play both ends and blow things up worse than they are. She genuinely wants to weed out the bad friends and says she's noticed a lot of people that are considered friends when they shouldn't be. Anyways, thanks for all the comments, support and advice on my first post. 
My first method definitely would have caused way more drama, i.e. meeting Ryan alone in any capacity. And I really hope the steal her fiancé comments were jokes. I can't bring myself to do that to Ryan when I'm pretty sure I'm aromantic at this point. I also looked into the suggested Petty Revenge sub, and yeah, it'd be hilarious to see Bridesell's meltdown, but not worth hurting one of my besties. Edit for Rachel and the scheming. Her wording was stirring the pot and weeding out the poop, which I initially took wrong. She clarified that when I left, Bridezilla added more people to the call, and she realised that some of the friends I've dropped everything to help out of a bad situation have the same view of me that Bridezilla has, and also have poor views of Ryan. I might give a better update later, but right now, my feelings are genuinely hurt, and I'm contemplating making their lives hell. I don't like these thoughts, so no contact it is. Update 3 As one commenter predicted, Bridezilla latched onto the not invited part of her comments and made it seem like that was my issue with her. Her angle is that I'm upset that I wasn't invited and that's why I'm sabotaging her and Ryan. She's telling everyone willing to listen that she felt that Ryan values me above her, so that's why she initially didn't want me there. She's saying she'll invite me if I talk Ryan out of leaving her and let her pick my outfit? I've allowed a lot of toxic behaviour around me, even when I cut my mother off for a lot of the same behaviours. I feel dumb to be honest, like really dumb, close to tears. There are, in fact, people I need to cut off. Surprisingly though, it's a small number, 4 of the 15 in our main group. These are people who have admitted to 1. Inviting me to concerts and parties, so they have a ride. 2. Asking me to join trips, so they have a mum to take care of things that they would forget. 3. Asking me to be a godparent because of how I treat Kim's kid. Paying for trips, buying random gifts, babysitting just to hang out, and having a room at my place just for them. 4. Setting me up on dates, so they'd have a doubles partner. On the room thing, because Bridezilla's entitlement didn't just magically poof away. Apparently, I meant to give that room to her hypothetical kid. Like, take it from my godson and give it to her kids. She thinks that because of how Ryan and I became friends, that means I should value my friendship with him above Kim, thus entitling her hypothetical kids to more. It's such a weird notion to me. The way I met Ryan was through a group grief counselling, but I don't think that friends have different worths the way that she and others described it. The friends who pass along the messages have been unblocked. I talked to them, and like another commenter suggested, they were sending screenshots because they themselves didn't realise they were allowing her to get away with stuff like that for years and were genuinely sorry. I told them I allowed it too, so I can't really be mad at them at this point. When I've said I don't like something, these are people who would stop it immediately. I should have said something earlier instead of ignoring it because Bridezilla was their friend and Ryan's girlfriend. I don't know if that makes it okay, but I'm gonna let it go. I glossed over Ryan telling Bridezilla to keep the ring and blocking her. As someone pointed out, there was much more said, some of which is not safe for work. There were things being shared to Rachel that he confided in Bridezilla about, but not in Rachel or I. Rachel didn't show me and I didn't ask to be shown either. But that's what made Ryan stop fixating on Bradzilla saying he had a crush and why he just cried for most of our meeting. I personally didn't see these texts, but Ryan told me what they were about and he's unsure about what to do beyond cutting things off. Again, he's not good with confrontation, but he's been working on that. He just knows he can't be a Bradzilla anymore, nor can he keep the she's not that bad mindset. He's also not comfortable nor ready to speak to her directly about what she did. Rachel's also admitted that she wants to air out all of Bridezilla's business, things I didn't know about and truly don't want to be told about. It's just been hinted at being potentially career-ending for Bridezilla. She's in nursing and could lose her license, according to Rachel. I'm not cutting her off, but I've told her I don't even think what we did in sharing the screenshots with everyone was the right thing. It's this morally grey area that I'm still trying to understand from her perspective and reconcile with my own morals. I love Rachel, but I don't want anything to do with Bradzilla and those have cut off officially for my own mental health. The nuke option might end in far worse fallout than right now. 
I don't think I can handle that level of drama. I don't think Ryan can either. Rachel's nuke option involves posting everything online. I suggested she does it anonymously, so she doesn't face any backlash or retaliation for it. She's taking that route instead, so Bradzilla might lose her job and license. I don't bank on the downfall of others, but the email I helped Rachel draft isn't kind. No abuse or negligence of a patient, but a lot of HIPAA violations in regards to patient information, medical equipment, and medication. I get OP feels bad for sharing all those screenshotted messages, but honestly, I don't think it's that morally grey. She's just bringing Bridezilla's treatment of her out into the light, so she can't keep manipulating people. Remember, I post new content every day, so subscribe for more juicy tea.